I'm Beth Jacobson, and I'm here with Pam Lathrop. And we're filming the Beloit edition of the the Beloit edition, the July edition of the Beloit Today Show. Today we're at Grinnell Hall, the Senior Center, which is on Bluff, and um, we're going to interview. Well, actually, Pam's going to interview John Kelker. John's got a lot of things going on um, coming up, and I just thought it would be fun to talk about some of those things. We always like to interview John. He has a lot of energy. Um, I'll interview. I'm going to be interviewing Chief Jacobs, and he's going to talk about crime prevention, Crime Stoppers, and um, National Night Out, which is on August 7th. So get your um, block party permits in as soon as possible. And should they just call the police department for that? Yeah, I mean, you can call the police department, or you can call the treasurer's office to um, close the street. Either one. There's a there's a piece of paper you have to fill out, and um, you can submit it on the second floor. Can McGruff come? I think McGruff will be out too. Um, there's a lot of block parties on August 7th, but um, I'm sure that he'll be out to make appearances. So um, they may sometimes they even say where he'll be at, and at what time. So keep that in mind. And and then who else are you interviewing? I'm also interviewing Terry Downing and Scott Schneider, who was sort of a surprise guest. Um, we called Scott in at the last second to um, talk a little bit about the house that they rehabbed over on McKinley. So um, people should, you know enjoy seeing another one of the houses. And we've um, formerly interviewed Terry and she's shown another house that was for sale on Elm which had sold after our show so I think that you know we're feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> um, this house is located at 615 McKinley and so if you're interested please um, take a drive by or call Century 21. S anything else? I have nothing else. So, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm here in the police department's briefing room, and I'm here with the police chief, Norm Jacobs. And we're here to talk about kind of a lot of things, but we'll focus on um, crime prevention and neighborhood watch groups. And then we'll talk about National Night Out, which happens every year in August. And it's, it's a fun time, and it's a police function. It's something that we always look forward to. So um, first of all, we're in the briefing room, and this is where, I don't know if any of you have ever seen it, probably not. This is where the police department gets together and has, has their meetings in the morning and at shift change. Um, Chief, can you talk to us a little bit about crime prevention? Um, there's two parts to it. There's, there's the crime stoppers, and then there's also stuff that you guys do inter you know, internally for crime prevention. Sure. Crime prevention for the police department, what it means is a cooperative effort between us and the community to do what's best to prevent crime in the community. Now, there's two ways, two big ways that uh, we have now organized for crime prevention. One is uh, neighborhood watch block groups, and the other is our support of crime stoppers in the community. And you have um, police officers that um, are out on foot, but this, this is actually a little bit more proactive where you get the community engaged um, to be to look for signs of of anything that might be sus suspicious, correct? Yes, neighborhood watch involves people communicating amongst the neighbors that they have in the area and reporting crime either to themselves uh, so that they're aware of what's going on in the neighborhood or to the police. And how many, I heard we have a lot of neighborhood watch groups, is that correct? We have 48 groups and we've had, had them for quite a while. We're always looking to start new groups, we encourage that. I hope to have a meeting in September public meeting if people are interested in, in starting a neighborhood watch block group. Uh, if they're interested now, what we'd like them to do is give a call to the police department and we'll have an officer come out and talk, talk to them or we'll have our uh, block watch coordinator give them a call to let them know how easy it is to start a block watch. And there's no geographic area required, so if, if you know your neighbors and even if it's a small group, you can start your own um, neighborhood watch group, is that correct? Yes, we like to have the groups in neighborhoods, just the 100 blocks of the streets. We also encourage um, community organizations to be involved with neighborhood watch block groups or a church. Oftentimes uh, people will uh, incorporate a church and the pastor will get involved and they'll help organize the neighborhood to have a block watch group. So I think a good thing um, that residents could do now that it's summer is if you're having a block party, I mean, that would be a probably an appropriate time to decide if you'd like to have a neighborhood watch group while you're actually communicating with your neighbors. That's right. Uh, you can uh, get together with your neighbors and get out a permit and have your street blocked off and talk about it. Or you can wait till uh, National Night Out, and that's August 7th. Uh, you can call down to the police department and we'll get you a form to fill out and uh, the Department of Public Works will drop uh, barricades off for you on that night and you'll be able to have the whole street to yourselves, you and your neighbors, and you can discuss uh, neighborhood watch groups or whatever you want as, as a neighborhood. Uh, the point is, is to get people communicating better amongst themselves. They feel better about 
their neighborhood, they feel better about the city. It stabilizes the neighborhood and, and supports communication, which is really what we need to help solve problems in neighborhoods. And if you're not aware of this, um, the National Night Out is, is an, it's an every year event. It's always one of the first weeks in August. And it's, it started, can you tell me a little bit of history about it? Um, we do it every year, but the point is just to communicate with neighbors, correct? Yes, the point of, of neighborhood watch groups and supporting this is to support efforts at the best level to prevent cr crime, which is in their neighborhoods. Uh, we've been doing it for a number of years. Some communities do it different ways, but we feel that it's best to get people in their neighborhoods out and uh, enjoying the day, enjoying the night. It's often a very hot night, but a lot, a lot of neighbors get very creative. They have uh, barbecues or picnics, and some bring games for, for the kids, and uh, some just go, go sit out in the, in the road in their lawn chairs and, and enjoy the peace and quiet. And I know that it's a busy night for the police department because there's so many um, block parties, but you try to get out and commute. You try to designate either a city council member or a police officer to try to go to as many as they can. Is that is that how that works? Yes, we do. A number of our officers go out and will try to meet with neighbors. Uh, some of the staff members in the department, oftentimes we're able to get some of our special units out to the block watches. Uh, the fire department helps and they often send out some of their equipment and talk with neighbors just to show support. A number of the council members try to make it, make the block watches also and talk with neighbors to keep them informed of what's going on in the city and that's a great opportunity for people in the neighborhoods to talk with the council members. Sure, so um, remember that that's on August 7th. If you want to have a block party, you can, um, I think the per I think you actually file that in the second floor, but um, you can call the police, you can call the city hall and we'll be able to help you with that. And so we've talked about crime prevention and we've talked about, um, can we talk a little bit about Crime Stoppers and um, what that entails and you know, can people just call in with any old thing or how does that work? Crime Stoppers is a 30-year organization that's been successful ever since it started in, in Beloit. It's probably one of the premier community groups uh, that we're very proud to be part of. Uh, they've got a great board of directors. And uh, Crime Stoppers is, is a program where people can provide information to the police that helps solve crime or, and prevent crime in the community. Um, there's three ways to do it now. You can go to their website. You can type in a tip. Uh, you can call the, the, the old way of doing it or the new way is to text and all of the inf information is available on their website. That information is taken in by our detectives and then we use it to help solve crimes, either one that's active or one that we need to start investigating. Now sometimes Crime Stoppers offers rewards but if even if you have a tip and you want to be anonymous that we'll, we'll also accept those as well. We basically just want to solve crimes, is that correct? That's right. Some people call in and they don't want, they tell uh, the coordinators, they don't want the money. But as far as the money goes, um, there's uh, the group itself in the last 30 years has given away over $400,000 to people in the community that have provided uh, tips that help have solved uh, almost 8,000 crimes. Oh, that's that's amazing. It sounds like a great program. We're lucky to have it. A lot of cities throughout the state have it. And, you know, what we would do is encourage you, you know, if you have a tip and there's a reward, then certainly accept it. But otherwise, if the, you know, we'll accept any tip that you have <laughs> um, crime related. And there's a lot of things going on in the police department. Um, certainly this summer they're busy. It's been pretty warm already. This is the July show and by August I'm sure will be <laughs> pretty warm. Um, so thank you Chief Jacobs for letting us interview you. We appreciate all the things that you guys do for the city. You're welcome. Terry Downing is with me today. We are at another one of the neighborhood stabilization program homes. This one is at 615 McKinley. Um, you might remember Terry from being on the show a couple months ago and um, she's our Director of Community and Housing Services. So we just kind of wanted to go over that program again and highlight this cute little house. Uh, Terry, what is the purpose of buying these older homes and rehabbing them? The purpose is uh, during the foreclosure crisis when the housing market crashed, we have a lot of homes that are vacant due to foreclosure and they sit and uh, just deteriorate. So we have a grant through the federal government that allows us to buy these homes um, and fix them up so we can get owner occupants inside of them. And I, as the title of the program is, it's to stabilize the neighborhood, right? Correct, because if there are empty houses sitting in your neighborhood just falling apart, then your property values are going to go down and uh, 
tends to attract vandals and things like that. So if we can get inside of them, fix them up and get an owner occupant inside, then uh, it brings value to the neighborhood. Well, that's a keyword, owner occupied, two keywords, owner occupied. So once you sell these homes, they can't be rented out again, right? What's the, what's the catch? Um, the catch is in order to buy one of these homes, you have to be an owner occupant. So you can't buy it and rent it out to anybody. Um, if you purchase it and you decide to sell it, you also have to sell it to an owner occupied or an owner occupant. Mm -hmm. uh, so for a period of 15 years. Um, after that point, then you know, then you're free to do with it what you want. Well, that seems very reasonable. I mean, you know, the point is to keep the neighborhood stable and keep people from moving in and out. You just want to um, make it be stable. <laughs> That's the best word, I guess. Right. The program is aptly named. Um, now, how do you you choose these homes um, because they're foreclosures and you want to improve the neighborhood? Um, and when you purchase these homes, they might be in some dire situations. So you were mentioning earlier today that you have some lead hazard reduction funds that you you go through the home and you take care of all the lead and poisonous right. substance. Right. Usually when uh, we acquire a home, um, it's not in the best shape. And that's exactly why people, you know, a regular investor or a, an owner occupant wouldn't buy it is it would take a lot of money to fix it up and everything. So what we do with the grant funds, we also have a lead grant uh, that we use to go in and remove all of the lead hazards in the house um, and any asbestos that's in there. Which, which could be considerable since these are older homes. Exactly. Um, so when the new person, uh, when the new buyer comes into the house, they don't have any uh, hazards for their children or for themselves in the house anymore. Which is perfect. What kinds of things, do you know what kinds of things they did to this house? Like do they do furnace or what kinds of what do they do to this home? Um, I actually don't know the answer to that question uh, because I just took over a few months ago so I do know they did an um, extensive uh, rehab to the flooring and the um, you know cosmetically I'm not sure Scott Schneider is here he might be able to answer some of those questions for you. Well, you might get Scott on. We might bring him on unexpectedly in a little minute. Um, but how long does it take usually to rehab these homes? I would say about six to nine months yeah. to rehab the homes as long as we're not short on contractors. Um, and we have to share contractors, you know, throughout all of our projects because Beloit's a small community. So we have, a, um, you know, only a small pool of contractors that, um, that we have access to. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that slows things down or weather if there's outside work, but um, usually about six to nine months we can get it done. That's pretty nice. Um, and uh, just walking through this house, you can see that things have been updated and it's clean and it's nicely painted. Um, and what is the price of this house? Uh, the price is 52.5 right now. Um, it was 59, but we've lowered the price to try to generate some interest. That's great. And it's right across the street from Gaston School, mm -hmm. so it would be perfect. Um, it's a two-bedroom, um, two so it would be perfect for a, a smaller family that has children to, to go to school. Yeah, the school is right across the street, um, directly across the street, so it's a, um, you just have to send your, if you have children, you could just open the door and send them off to school. <laughs> Perfect. Well, could we just put this on pause and, and ask Scott to step into the picture? Scott Schneider is the project manager for the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, and he kindly stepped in to tell us a little bit about what has been done to this home. Sure, Pam. Um, what we did in this home was actually not as extensive as we do in other homes. There was a little bit of uh, resurfacing of the cabinets here and a good deal of painting and new flooring coming in it was actually in relatively good shape as compared to some of our other houses. Um, the other example of that would be a new house that we have uh, that we recently purchased, 823 St. Lawrence. Um, that is an old duplex that there's going to be major and extensive work uh, performed on that. Uh, the bathroom, the kitchen is going to be, it was originally one room, they split it in the middle uh, to put a bathroom in there and kind of shoehorn it in. We're going to tear that out and make it into a, a decent modern day kitchen and then also there were a few other issues on the back apartment side of that and the other duplex where uh, 
things just need to be brought up to code. So instead of, you know, propagating the, the duplex and making it going from rental to homeowner occupied, we're going to take that small rental unit and we're going to turn that into a master bedroom and bathroom in there. So that'll really improve that house. So it won't be a duplex anymore? Correct. It's going from a duplex to single family. Yes. Oh. That's nice. That's nice for the whole area and the whole neighborhood, too. Yes. Yep. And I saw some pictures of that home um, earlier today, and really people should drive past it and look at the before and after. It, it is a diamond in the rough, isn't it? Yes, it is. So it's, it's pretty rough right now, but uh, we'll hopefully get working on this here really soon, and it'll turn into a diamond. Now, if you have questions or you'd like to be part of the competitive bid process, you can call Scott, and your phone number? is 361 Six four four seven. And if you are interested in purchasing any of these homes, Vicki Gentoff Johnson is the realtor that's been handling the sales, and uh, you can get a hold of her at Century Twenty One. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Scott. Not a problem. John Calkerts is the director of Grinnell Hall, the senior center here in Beloit, and he's here today to tell us a lot of things that are going on. Um, you have a busy summer coming up. Oh, I tell you, it's fantastic. We got our picnic coming up on June 26th. And July. That's what I said, July 26th. I'm sure glad you're here. We just got done with the other one, and now we're in June. We're still in June right now, but we're talking about the July picnic. So July 26th, and it's going to be from 10 a.m. to 3.30, and it's going to have a lot of things going on. We have our bingo from 10 a.m. to 11.30, and then we'll have our wonderful luncheon at uh, 11.30. Uh, Bill Stevens is going to play with his accompaniment from 12.30 to 2.30 in the main dining room. Plus, we have an ice cream social at 1 o'clock. And then there will be a lot of door prizes given out. So it's going to be a fun time for one and all. And remember, we are climate control. We are air conditioned. For those of you who don't like the heat, come on in. And it's beautiful here at the center. I bet there are no bugs either. No bugs. I tell you, not one bug. I promise. Not, no bugs at the picnic. Yeah, it's, it's kind of nice, really, it is. Awesome. And now what other kinds of things do you have going on? Well, we do have a lot of different activities. Uh, like, for instance, our health care screenings are very big here. We have our hearing screening always the second uh, Tuesday of the month, and it's from 10 to 11. And we also have other things like your blood pressure clinic the second Tuesday of the month, the blood uh, sugar cl clinic. We have our foot clinic. So we have a wide variety of healthcare screenings. And Do those all happen right here at Grinnell Hall? Right, they're all at 631 Bluff Street. We're located right here uh, in Beloit, and we're glad to have everybody here. Now, you were mentioning one really kind of interesting um, new activity that you have, a um, massage? Oh, yeah, I sacrifice my body for this, you know. <laughs> we just started this uh, this week, and we're doing hand massage as something different. And uh, uh, Cherry Tree Assisted Living is doing it, and they're incorporating it with their blood pressure clinic. So it's a double header. They can have their blood pressure done and have their hands massage. Does Madge come in with the palm olive? Oh, I tell you, it's wonderful. I tell you, it's heavenly. So if you never had a hand massage, guys, come on in. It's open to the general public, but it is wonderful. So that's always the last Thursday of the month from 1030 to 1130. Okay, and, and now on a more serious side, you also have some grief counseling that you were talking about. Yeah, about three or four months ago, we had a situation where somebody was saying to me, we would like to do some counseling here in the area uh, for a brief support group. And I said, well, why don't we try it? So uh, what, we're, uh, what we're doing is every second and fourth uh, Tuesday of the month, from 10 to 1130, we do have counselors here to help people with issues. I didn't realize how important this was until we started it, but we're getting quite a few people come to Grinnell Hall. It's done in private, and there's no charge. So that's every second and fourth Tuesday of the month at Grinnell Hall. We do have grief counseling, which is a little bit different, but again, we're better fulfilling the needs in our community because of that. It's a wonderful um, activity to um, offer to people. And um, Judy stepped into the camera shot here so we can talk about another activity that you have. Right. We have what's called the chore service, and this was started way back in the 90s from a survey at the senior fair. And the people in the community says, how can we stay in our home or apartment? We need help like house cleaning, uh, minor home repairs, and so forth. So what was happening is we went out, got a grant, and the chore service was started. 
and we've had it since then and we get calls every week on the chore service and we have Judy Haberman here who will explain all about the wonderful things that they do at the chore service. Judy, first of all, how does a person get in touch with the chore service? Okay, they can call here down at the office here at 365-5670. My hours are 10 until, until 2. And um, we've got about 30 registered workers right now. We, we do a complete background check on them um, before they're allowed to be workers. And a lot of our workers are seniors themselves. And we do the minor uh, repairs as far as carpentry, electric, plumbing, we got yard work, we do snow, snow removal, but then you get like the cleaning the gutters and washing windows, and we got housekeepers. The only thing we do not do is any personal care as far as bathing and dressing and that, because we don't have the training for that. Um, the office right now is sponsored by Voluntary Action, but our office is here right at Gridell Hall, so it's a good place to find us. <laughs> Is there a charge to the seniors for those services? Yes, the um, workers are all considered independent contractors, so they set their own rates, but because we receive the calls and make the referrals, they all have agreed to give lower rates to seniors that are trying to remain in their own home. Well, that's quite a nice um, service. That's great. Yeah, I, I, when I first started, I was just amazed how many people don't have family to rely on, and um, really sometimes just don't know where to turn so and I mean we get a lot of calls you know even from Janesville because there's people that need the help can you give us a phone number in case people would like to call for that okay the phone number again is 365-5670 thank you thank you and John what else do you have going on in July I know that you certainly have plenty of activities well we I forgot to mention we have a quilting class we started a quilting class on Mondays at 1 o'clock and again, I didn't realize how many quilters there are out there. So we're always trying new activities at the center. And again, they can always call us at 364-2875 or stop on down Monday through Friday from 8 to 430. We have a wonderful brochure to give them with all of our activities Monday through Friday. We have a computer lab with 10 high-speed computers. We also have a wonderful library where people could pick out books and we also have a 54 inch color television set if they would like to listen to the soaps watch movies or whatever so there is a wide variety of things we have card games every afternoon Monday through Friday we have exercise programs on five days a week we have our Tai Chi exercises yoga exercises easy stretch jazzercise you name it we got it it makes me tired just to think about it all well, it's great I, I tell you it's, it's it's really fun because it's a wide variety of things and people sometimes only come in one for one particular activity and that's great so I'm always listening to people find out what they would like and I try to find individuals or volunteers that will help implement it well, I think it's fabulous. Um, you guys do a great job over here at Grinnell Hall. I, I love to come in here because there's a great energy, and you bring a lot to the program. So um, I urge people to stop in. Um, what's a senior? Well, a senior is considered, according to our bylaws, at 50 and over, but we have that as part of because it ties in with the AARP 50 and over. So that is really good. And what I, I try not to use the word senior, it's the uh, recycled teenager. We love the recycled teenagers, and everybody's a recycled teenager. All right. Well, thank you, John, for being on the show with us, and I thank Judy also. Hello. I'm Nikki Meyer, and I'm the executive director of Friends of Riverfront. And today it's sort of executive director day because I have Shauna El Amin, the new executive director of the Downtown Beloit Association. Welcome, Shauna. Thank you. Yay. So we are both here today to tell you all the things that are going on in Beloit. And I'm going to start out telling you, don't forget, on Monday nights we have Dancing at Harry's Place right over here at the famous Harry Moore Pavilion. Classes start at 7. From 7 to 8 we'll have a lesson. And from 8 to 9 is open dance. And this coming Monday where this segment will air on July 9th, it will be line dance and Cajun two-step. Why Cajun Two-Step, you wonder? Let me tell you. Cajun Two-Step is to get ready for the band that is coming July 13th. Red Stick Ramblers are coming from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And they are a hybrid mix of Cajun, Swing, a little Zydeco, a little mix of their own. And the Red Stick Ramblers are coming all the way up to Beloit, Wisconsin on July 13th. And they will entertain our 
Music and More crowd, plus there will be a three-class reunion of the class of 1972 from Beloit Catholic High, Beloit Turner, and Beloit Memorial High School. So if you want to come down to the park and see some of your old friends from the class of 1972, then you want to meet up here on that Friday night, July 13th. So those are two big events. You want to check our website, www.friendsofriverfront.com. Our calendar is always on there. A listing of the music and more and the dancing is always on there. And we just finished our plein air event and some of the pictures of the art will be on there. But Shauna and the DBA have a big weekend coming coming up and I'm going to turn it over to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, August 3rd and August 4th we're actually going to have right downtown our Celebrate Weekend which is also our street dance night. So August 3rd it's going to start with the Reverend Raven and the Chainsmoke and Altar Boys is going to be our opening act for the Eddie Butts Band right after that at 8 o'clock. Um, so come on down and we're going to have lots of fun all night. And then Saturday, August 3rd, we're going to have our Farmer's Market normally starting at 8 o'clock. And then we're also going to have sidewalk sales all day. And we're also at 10 o'clock going to dedicate our gantry, which is our new project downtown. Uh, it's very beautiful. So we're going to do a big dedication party for that. Um, anything else that you want on that event, we also have on our website website www.downtownbeloit.com and we also have uh, other stuff going to be incorporated into that we don't have all the details yet uh, seeing how it's almost a month away but we're going to add some kid friendly stuff to it and also some uh, frozen drinks for those of you that are hot there is a cost to that right yes to get in uh, it's actually five dollars to get in the door and then um, you can we have some beer sales going on and some other sales going on too and you can use volunteers Yes, we always. I think this is first time together. We always need volunteers, so if you're interested in volunteering, you can give us a call at 608-365-0150. Perfect. And one of the other things that I want to mention, because way down there behind me is the new bridge that has been un under construction all summer, and there will be a bridge dedication Saturday, September 8th. Don't have a lot of details. I'm sure Dave and his crew will come back and we'll talk about that on another um, segment. But know that the date will be September 8th and Saturday, and that's Heritage Day's weekend. So it will be an exciting time. So join us. It may be a little bit warm down here on the riverfront and at Farmer's Market. There's a breeze blowing. There's good treats at Farmer's Market and good events in Beloit. So hope to see you out on the riverfront downtown. We welcome you. Thanks again. Bye. Well, that wraps up our July edition of Blight Today. Um, Pam, what are you reading? Oh, sorry. Um, I, I just picked up one of the books that was here in the Grinnell Library, and I was reading about Independence Day. Oh, well, it's appropriate. It's the July edition of the Blight Today Show. Yes, it is, and I promise I won't start singing. <laughs> Well, we've had we've had a lot of things going on that we've um, we've talked to the fire chief, and, or the excuse me, the police chief, and we talked to um, John here at Grinnell Hall and, and Terry and Scott. And doesn't John just have so much energy that you just get caught up and you just want to come to Grinnell Hall? That's right. Um, and he, I think we're supposed to call it the um, the what what did he call it the re the teenage. Oh, recycled, recycled teenagers. Teen, recycled teenage center is what we're going to call it from now on. I'm, I'm getting to that point. Oh. <laughs> we, I won't ask. <laughs> um, so we have a lot of things going on. Please be safe. Um, you know, in July, the, the weather's been very hot. I'm hoping that by the time that this show airs, we have, um, we've gotten some rain. And actually, you wanted to mention one big event that we have that's going to happen during the week that this show airs. That's right. There's the bike race downtown on July 12th. It's a Thursday. Um, downtown on, Broad, let me see if I can get my streets right, Broad Street to Grand Avenue to Pleasant. Um, there's going to be a bike race. Traffic will be open, but it will be... Um, Kind of manipulated a little bit so if you're in the area on thursday please be safe please be aware of the cyclists and if you have the time um come on down and enjoy the bike race yeah uh, just you know be patient with all the traffic but it it's going to be a lot of fun it'll be very interesting to watch mm -hmm. so thank you for um that we should thank all of our staff for helping us absolutely thanks to cable access television and as always um stay tuned for our next show